you are doing it wrong. And by you, I really mean like Midas and Behringer because since they introduced the user routing, user in and user out in version 4 of the firmware, although the idea itself is really good and I'm happy that it's there, but they missed the most important thing which is the default settings. Here's why. Before that, you could only do block routing, so every 8 channels together, you couldn't do one-to-one -one patching. Then they introduced this user in and user out. That's great, you're like, Okay, I'll grab this and set it to user in. But guess what? When you do that, you lose audio because there's nothing patched on the user in page by default. And same goes for the user out. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your own default scene. So when you initialize the console, instead of going here and going to mixer and initialize, you will just load your own initialized scene. And this will save you a lot of time and frustration. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Go to the routing menu and on the user in page, I'm gonna patch everything just like it is on the inputs page by default. So I'll walk you through my setup just so you can get the idea of it, but you can do the same for your setup if you're using something else, because I'm using a stage box right now. You may be using the local inputs on your actual board or you're using two stage boxes, doesn't matter. The idea is still the same. Currently, I'm using the DL32 stage box connected to the A port of the mixer. So all my inputs are coming from the AS58. From 1 to 32, they are going to channels 1 to 32, one by one. So what I will do on the user in page is that I will mimic exactly that. So I'll go to the user in and these are the inputs from the user in page. And these are the actual physical XLR plugs. So I'm going to assign input 1 to 8 to AS5128. So I'm going to select that block and do this diagonal line right here and do the same for the others. So you have one long diagonal line and that is exactly the same thing as that. However, now if I want to change to user routing, I can just simply do this and now I switch to the user inputs. However, I did not lose any audio because I already patched everything here. You see what I'm saying? By default, it's all off. And now if you want to change just one thing or two things, you can just select it, do this and not have to worry about repatching everything else because it's off by default. You can just worry about the thing that you want to change. So I'm going to get these back here. If you're not using any stage boxes and you're using your local inputs, you can set your default scene to be these local inputs. So instead of assigning the inputs 1 to 32 on this side to the AS50, you can assign them to the local. You can do like this. Okay, same goes for the AS50B, you can do this. So whatever is your main source of inputs that you would be using on the input page, mirror that in the user in page. Because then when you want to actually use the user in page or the user out page, everything is patched already. You don't have to worry about repatching the other six inputs because you only want to change two. In my case, I'm using AS50A, so it makes sense to me to patch these to AS50A. And I will usually use the default routing here, the block routing, but in case I need to do that user routing I can just go here and set it to that and now I can go into the user in page and do whatever I need to do here without worrying about all the other inputs that got dispatched if that's even a word. So this is for the inputs. I will do the exact same thing for the outputs. And the user out page, also as you can see, nothing is patched. It's all off by default. I will look at the normal outputs page. So if you're using the big console, you can look at the XLR page. I don't have anything here because I'm using the Midas M32C, which doesn't have any local XLR inputs or outputs on it. That's why this page is empty on my setup. So for me, I will go to the AS50 page because I'm using a stage Box. And whether you're on the XLR page or the AS50, by default, outputs 1 to 16 will always be assigned to the out 1 to 16 of this page, where you usually change or configure your output. So I'm going to look right here, and by default, out 1 to 16 of the stage box or of the AS50A and also B are assigned to 1 to 16 of the out page. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go to the user out and assign outputs 1 to 8 to out 1 to 8 because this out is this out, which is the same as this out. Okay, so I'm just mimicking the exact same thing that is default on this page to the user page. So outputs 1 to 8 
go to out one to eight and I'm gonna do that quickly right here. All these beautiful diagonal lines, same thing, nine to 16 to out nine to 16. And this repeats. You don't have to do that, but just for the sake of simplicity, I'm mimicking what is happening on the default settings of the outputs. So also 17 to 32 get the same outputs. So I'm gonna do that again. And the last 16 outputs, which are 33 to 48, are the alternate outputs, which are the P16 channels that you send to the personal monitors. So I'm gonna go again here and assign 33 to 40 to be alternate. And the last eight also be the last alternate outputs. And so now you can see that this is exactly the same thing that is happening here. So now in case I need to change anything in the outputs of the AS50, I can go here and assign it to some user output and nothing would break. I would not lose audio because everything is still the same on the user out page. Then I could just get in here and click whatever change I need to change without worrying that I need to assign the others because nothing was assigned by default. I'm gonna fix what I messed up right here. So now that I prepared the user out page and the user in page, I can go ahead to my inputs and outputs and make sure everything is how I want it to be for the gear that I'm using. Because I'm using a stage box, I want my inputs to come from the AS50A that is connected to that stage box. And for the outputs, I would want the default, which is out 1 to 16, out 1 to 16, and the alternate 1 to 16. That's the Default. And in case I need to change anything on the fly, I can just assign it to a user out or user in whatever I want to do and change it here without worrying about things breaking. And last thing you're gonna do is go to the scenes and save this as a scene on number zero and call it initialize so that when you want to initialize your console instead of going to the setup and initializing it right here you actually have a scene that will initialize your console but it's more efficient to use with the routing and will save you time and will save you frustration so i'm gonna go ahead and do that right now you will not hear my voice because i need to reset the channel that i'm speaking into everything is saved on that scene whenever I need to initialize the console I will just load that scene that is called initialize and it's saved on the first slot on the mixer itself and I'll give you this scene I'll let you download this because you're well lazy <laughs> And if you have another setup, well, you just have to change one thing, which is the inputs, basically, if you're using another AS50 port or local inputs. But for the outputs, it's the same. Now, if this confused you and you don't really understand how outputs work on this console and what are the different types of outputs, click on the video on the screen right now where I explain all of this and I'll see you there.